This is the beginning of an artistic journey for Anna von Mertens. The material manifestation of that journey will be a quilt sculpture, incorporating panels of hand-dyed fabric and as many as 100,000 hand-sewn stitches. Over the course of her career as an artist, Anna has created 36 quilts. At first glance, they seem like works of minimalist abstraction, but the colors, patterns, and stitches can be decoded to reveal many layers of meaning, aesthetic, scientific, and personal. Uh, Anna's quilts in particular are incredibly meticulous. Her work um, is, is very carefully thought through. It's quite remarkable if you look up close at her work, how carefully placed each and every stitch is. So if you're going to go through that amount of labor to create a work of art, what you're working on has to be profoundly important to you. Anna is just beginning the process of creating a new series of three quilts, each one of which will take as long as four months to complete. She's calling the new series Gray Area. This is the very first step to the whole process. So basically I always start with a computer and I always start mocking up uh, the, the, the quilts on the computer first. Gray Area embodies many layers of meaning all of which connect back to the idea of looking west across the ocean. The colors reflect the bright luminescent hues of sunset over the Pacific, a theme that she has already explored in a previous work entitled West. But in her new work, Anna has replaced a simple pattern of stacked horizontals with bands of color that stretch to an invisible point beyond the limits of the quilt surface, a composition that reflects her own yearnings for something just beyond the horizon. I wanted to explore a literal gray area, a way that highlighted and sort of embraced ambiguity. Um, it's something I actually am trying to do in, in my own life, so there's a way that I'm trying to welcome sort of chaos and um, chance and, and newness into my life. Color symbolism plays an important role in Anna's work. She hand dyes all of her fabric to achieve the exact color combinations that she envisions. basically two yellows, two reds, and two blues that I work from. When I dye the cloth, people always think that I'm a very exact person, and I really do kind of wing it, just because visually you can kind of read the cloth as it dyes. So um, there's a lot of variables in terms of how much dye you put in, and how much reactor, and how much time you leave it in. So if you're just kind of constantly monitoring it as you dye the cloth, then you can kind of feel your way through it. It's always a challenge to match exactly the, the colors that I want, but um, the good thing with dyeing is that you can kind of build up with color. Obviously, if it's too dark, you can't go backwards, but you can kind of build up. So I try to underestimate the colors I'm dyeing, and then I can always over-dye them to kind of accent that color. Well, certainly her work owes a lot to minimalism. She takes great care to translate complicated ideas and to distill it into the very most essential um, color schemes and patterns. It's that process that minimalists go through of taking really broad ideas and broad experiences and distilling them into something that is profoundly personal that may not be accessible just by glancing at it. After the fabric is dyed, pieced, and sewn together, Anna begins the most laborious part of her art making process. Hand sewing an intricate surface pattern made up of thousands of individual stitches. This is the top. These patterns map complex landscapes that create yet another layer of meaning. Where's the head? Head's here. In the two quilt series entitled Black and White, Anna renders the intricate blast pattern of a nuclear explosion from two different perspectives. In self-portrait, the stitches trace the topography of Anna's own body. In East and West, Anna renders the contrasting cultures of the East and West coasts of the United States in the form of energy fields, 
the West Coast as the Big Bang, the East Coast as space and light collapsing around a black hole. For the pattern of overlying stitches in her latest work, Anna has turned for inspiration to the ebb and flow of tides in San Francisco Bay. So here is a tide without the actual landmass. Here's the tide leaving the Bay Area, the, these blue arrows. And so I wanted this idea again of the Gray Area to be letting, letting go of systems and sort of breaking down. So I took these arrows as starting points and then basically rotated each arrow in space within AutoCAD into complete chaos. Once Anna has finalized her design on the computer, she projects it onto the quilt itself, tracing the pattern onto the fabric's surface. It is almost like this little microcosm of a world that, that I sort of enter into, partly because I am stitching maps and partly just because I'm on such a detail level um, that, that I sort of get consumed in the world. But my mind sort of wanders. Um, you also have to remember that I spend months and months stitching, so often it's, it's either distracting, distracting myself almost from my own thoughts or getting lost in them. I think Anna's work fits very nicely within a tradition that's been, um, that's been happening in the Bay Area since the 60s of what I would call four-dimensional art, which is art that, um, that happens over a long period of time and even if the plans are very neatly laid out from the beginning, which Anna's clearly are, um, that uh, there's something about the amount of time that the work takes that transforms the piece and transforms the viewer's relationship to the piece. You know, really handcrafting something is only interesting when you have something to say. To make my ideas significant enough, I have to put them in um, a vehicle that, that is significant enough. So it's almost like the labor mirrors the concepts in an equal part. I'm just going to do more finger painting than anything else. <laughs> Anna's vision for each piece extends far beyond the completion of the stitched surfaces to their installation in gallery settings. Here at Bard College in New York, she's installing two pieces that explore bird migration patterns. She begins by tracing a map onto the horizontal surface of the floor, a map that will serve as a visual and conceptual framework for her quilts. The installation at Bard College is um, using bird migration patterns to kind of map the world or see the world differently. So I was really interested in, in eliminating political boundaries and thinking about a different, different mapping system. So what I did was research as much as I could um, uh, annual migration pattern for each species, and I found information on about 100 species. The little circles on the floor map all these what birders call hot spots, which are um, stopover points, so huge amounts of birds funnel through those areas in their migration. While many fine art quilt makers try to eliminate any association with the practical use of quilts by hanging them vertically, like paintings on a wall, Anna insists on displaying her quilts on bed-like platforms. I do consider my work sculptures. I often get pushed to put the quilts on the wall to display them that way, and the one thing I insist about my artwork is that it's always seen on a horizontal level in the sculptural form. Okay, so it gets butted up. Like the side of the bed is this rich context for where everything happens. So I, it's almost like I don't even see my medium as quilting so much as like the bed itself as being my medium. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so then we can take um, the two tape measures and just even out the sides. I think it's important that viewers encounter Anna's work uh, in three dimensions because in a literal way, you have to encounter it at any level. I mean, there's a way in which it, it forces a different kind of recognition of the work. The viewer is led to think about, about all the things that take place on a bed, you know, um, everything from, from birth to lovemaking to death um, can all transpire on a bed. And in fact, all those things do transpire in Anna Van Merten's quilts. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks good. 
so I'll just sort of play with those a little. <laughs> 